Anyway, I want to talk this morning about how to get a running start in 2017. Today is the 8th of January, and, and 8th is always considered the beginning, the 8th day, the beginning day, or when God started over with, the, uh, Mo, uh, with Noah, he started with eight people. And after the last day of the week, the 7th day is the 8th day. So 8th is always considered the beginning. Jesus rose on Sunday, the 8th day. Uh, so using that as, an, as a uh, springboard, and the fact that this is the beginning. Now, and the Bible says in Genesis that God gave seasons to man. God didn't need to distinguish different seasons, but he gave it to man because he knew man needed to have, man needed to, have to be regenerated and change and, and maneuver. So he gave different seasons so that we could make certain decisions about things. And so January the 1st is another season, and usually when the New Year comes around or when Easter comes around, when Christmas comes around, when anniversary comes around, those seasons, we make sort of commitments. I'm going to do this. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to uh, read my Bible. I'm going to do whatever more. So this is just another opportunity. But the case is that the Israelites were getting ready to go to the Promised Land. Everything was in order, basically. Everything was in order. Uh, they had been out of Egypt for about 12 months, 14 months, 12 to 14 months, and so everything was sort of settled. And we look at Numbers chapter 10, verse 11. Now, in the second year of the second month, on the 20th of the month, the cloud was lifted, the sons of Israel set out on their journey getting ready to go to the promised land. And I like to think of this as the year of acceleration for us. This is when we are going to excel with an E, but we're going to accelerate with an A. And also, it's a time where we have to get a good start. Whenever you watch the Olympics and they have the starting blocks and the and sometimes, especially if you're doing a 100-meter dash, sometimes they will say, he didn't get out the blocks good enough. Or you're watching, watching uh, horse racing, and he didn't get out, the horse didn't get out the stall fast enough. And sometimes that, that start will determine where you finish. So I would like to think that, that if we're going to really accomplish some personal goals in terms of our family, our own lives, our jobs, our careers, you know, our relationships. we got to get out to a running start. If you're really going to have good relationships this year, if you're going to have good um, success with your job or your school, your co-workers, your friendships, you got to get off to a good running start because if you don't get off to a good start, it may determine that you will not finish in the place that you want to finish. You got to be thinking, I got, I'm going to reach my goal. It's almost like the little boy, uh, the father was teaching him how to climb the tree. And every time he put the little boy up in the tree, the boy said, I'm going to fall, I'm going to fall. And the, and, and the boy kept thinking, I'm going to fall, Dad, I'm going to fall. And the dad said to him, don't think about falling, think about climbing. And so, if you're going to get off to a running start, we got to stop thinking about how bad things are and how we may not make it. We've got to think about how good things can be and the possibilities are unlimited. So think about climbing. Sometimes we, uh, we uh, uh, just sort of go back into, uh, uh, regurgitate actually, we go back into old habits. Think about not how I had a bad relationship, or I didn't do well in school, or I didn't, have, didn't do well with my uh, friendships and stuff like that, and I didn't do well with my businesses or my economics and stuff. Think about what I can do. So don't think about falling. Think about climbing. So the first thing you need to do then, if you're going to get off to a running start, and as the children of Israel get ready to come out of Egypt, the first thing they did was, and let's pray, Lord, we ask that you bless us today, help us to ignite your word, kindle your word, so that it will warm the hearts of those who uh, 
I heard it. In Jesus' name, amen. The first thing we need to do is remember your position in Christ. Your position in Christ. When God started with children of Israel, he said, I, I'm going to ask that you uh, observe the Passover. Numbers chapter 9. But look at the first four uh, words. Now let the sons, their position where they were children of God. Remember your position. Always remember your position. Your position means that I am number one before I start the race, and because I'm number one, I'm going to win the race. Your position in Christ as a child of God. Always do it. Satan will try to tell you you are no good, you're not worthy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but always remember, I'm a child of God. You have a permanent place in God's heart. The Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. But now you have been united with Christ. You have been brought near to him through his blood. Always remember that it's the blood of Christ, my position in Christ. Sometimes when Satan tries to uh, disturb me, I'll use that word. Everybody know what the word disturb means? He tried, and, and because of my failures or because of my what thought process or whatever, I will tend to uh, beat myself up. But then I have to remember my position in Christ. I'm a child of God. Wounded, maybe, but still a child. Broken, maybe. The Japanese have a word for it, and I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but it means golden uh, repair. And their word is that you cannot really live a life until you have been broken. And so remember that you were, as the Bible says, you were, you were not, only, you're not, not longer a slave, but a child, but God's own child. You bear his heir. You have been broken by uh, accepting Christ in your heart, and now you are his child. And remember your position. That's all. Just remember my position here. Just, just don't let anything stop that. I can get off to a running start now because I know I'm a saved child of God. Damage maybe, damage goods maybe, but I'm still saved. You ever seen a package that come from, comes from the uh, post office sometimes? See, it has a stamp on it. As long as it has a stamp on it, it's good, even though the package may be damaged, but the stamp is good. So always remember your position in Christ. The Bible tells us in if, if Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, you, in him, you have been made complete. So that's the first thing to do. When I want to get to a running start, I got to remember my position. I am a child of God. God sees me as holy, as complete, as perfect. I see myself as unholy, as incomplete, and dishonorable. But I don't see myself as I see myself. I see myself as God sees me. So remember your position in Christ. Always look in the mirror and say, you know, I am who I am, not by what I see, but what God has made me. And the second thing, then, if you want to get off to a running start and reach that goal, have that dream, uh, have that life that you plan to have, get the rewards that you want to get, you got to remember the power you possess in Christ. Not only your position in Christ, but we possess some power. Now, I want to look at how God talks to Moses about the staff in his hand. And look at the progression of, of this staff that Moses that is mentioned in Exodus chapter 4, verse 2. Then the Lord asked, what is in your hand? And Moses said, a shepherd's staff. That's all it is, just a staff. Moses didn't realize that that staff was powerful. In Exodus chapter 4, God says, and, you, and take your shepherd's staff with you. And use it to perform miraculous signs I have shown you. That staff you have, Moses, represents the word of God, represents me. You have it. The next chapter 4, verse 20. And so Moses took his wife and his sons and put them on a donkey and headed back to the land of Egypt. In his hand, he carried the staff of God. You got to remember the power that you have in you. Got to remember that. You got power in you. There was a case in, um, the Bible says, uh, and I have this somewhere, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Jesus said, God says God is light, but then he says, you are the light of the world. 
In 1957, a Columbia University student uh, was, he, he said, he was doing some experiments. He said, if, if I could harness light, he said, there's power in light. If I could condense light, boy, I could just have extreme power. And he came up with condensing light and what we have today called a laser. <laughs> and, this, and you can take a laser beam two or three miles away and shatter something just by light, condensing light. If we could just take this powerful thing. And so the Bible says we have the light in us. We have the power. Man, you are a laser. Smash things. with. <laughs> So we are, we are like that. You are the light of the world. And, and, and if, if, if mankind can take a laser and condense light and, it, and, 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 and amplify it and, and with the radiation and, 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 and get it to just shine and two miles away blast something, even, even today they, they can uh, uh, take a laser and, and, and get rid of your kidney stones. I mean, just by light. Who would have thought there's power in light? Light is everywhere. No, it's in you. You have the power. So always remember that. The Bible says this. You are the light. You are from God. You have overcome because great is he that is in you than he that's in the world. So remember the power in you. Don't ever, don't ever think that you just have a staff. What do you got? I got a, a stick in my No, you got the power of God in your hand. And you can call things, and you can pray about things, and you can uh, say things, and you can call on uh, the power of God to get you through things. The Bible says, I can do all things to Christ Jesus that strengthens me. So remember the light that you have in you. And we can't forget that. If I'm getting to a running start, I got power. And so I know I'm going to be off to a good thing. 2017, I'm going to remember my position. I'm going to remember the power that God has in me. And number three then. Uh, this is also important. Uh, when Abraham arrived in Canaan, the Lord appeared to him and said, I will give this, um, when Abram rather, I will give this land to your descendants. And then in Exodus he says, I will bring you into the land I swore to, God, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own possession. I am your God. And so remember God's promises. Remember his position that your position, remember your power, but remember his promises. God does make promises, and he will keep his promise. And God makes his promise based on two things. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. And because of his glory, that is his honor, God is honorable. He keeps his word. And because of his excellence, that's his title, your excellency, because of those two things, his glory and his title, he has given us great and precious promises. And God, remember his promise. God said, I'm going to get you through it. I'll be with you all the way to the end. I'll get you through this mess. And so if God didn't bring us this far to leave us, remember his promises. So I can get off to a running start now because I know uh, I don't have to see what the end is going to be. I know what the end is going to be. So remember his promises, his divine promises. God will God will keep his promise. I, I, I meant this last night that Booker T. Washington, his book, Up From Slavery, some of you read that book, Up From Slavery, he had in there a story about a slave who uh, was trying to buy his freedom, and he told his master that I'll pay for my freedom. But in the time when he was buying his freedom, uh, uh, the master sort of let him go and said, you pay me and, 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 and you can stay free until you finish paying me. The Emancipation Proclamation came. So in 1863, January 1, uh, all slaves are free. And so he didn't have to pay. But some years later, after the war and stuff, this slave uh, uh, went back to that old master and paid him the remaining money for his freedom. Now, he didn't have to. And Booker T. Watcher said, but he had made a promise he would. And so that's how God is. God has made a promise, and because of who he is, he's going to keep his promise. He is your honor. He is your excellency. 
and his divine nature and escape the world corruption caused. So he has made a promise that he would always be there for you. There are times when I personally think that, man, God, you got to help us out here. But he's promised that I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says this. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. That's God's promise. Give you rest. He will deliver us from everything. The Bible says this in Ephesians, I mean, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He gives us power to, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. And those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. This is not uh, a de- this is not just saying. This is a promise that God has given us for this year. He says, "Those who trust in the Lord, it's a promise. Will find new strength. Promise. They will soar high on eagles' wings like eagles. Promise. They will run and not not grow weary." They will walk and not faint. That's a promise that God gives us. So it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. God promised to us. Now, of course, sometimes it doesn't always. uh, God promised to get us through every sad situation. Um, And 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 those of you who know uh, the, the TV character, uh, Rocky and, and Rambo and Sylvester Stallone, uh, when his son died in 2012, uh, someone asked uh, Stallone, Sylvester Stallone about that, and he said, he said something that he said, "Man, I could fictitiously I could play Rocky and win in the 13th round after being knocked around, and I could do Rambo and, and come back and all that kind of stuff." He said, "But I didn't have enough power to save my son." But God can get us through the sadness. Anything we're going through, God can get us through because he says, I will give strength to the powerless. You will be with. So there are times when you're going to go weary. There are times when you're going to have sad moments. There are just going to be times when you're just going to have sad moments, bad moments, sad moments. A moment, by the way, is a minute and 30 seconds. Uh, <laughs> but just, just throw it out there for you so you can figure it out. That's what it, in the initial, that's how it came up. A moment, a minute and 30. So there are going to be times you're going to have a minute and 30 seconds of sad. Anybody ever have a minute and 30 seconds of sadness? That's a moment. See you in a moment. Somebody say, see you in a moment. Okay, you're going to be back in a minute and 30 seconds, I guess. Uh, but the point is, Look at John 14, 7, 27. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. So don't be troubled or afraid. That's what God said. That's his promise. And so there are times when I have that moment of, of frustration. I have that moment of, of, of sadness. Uh, Sometimes when I have that moment of hurt, I realize that I have a promise that God will always be there. And that's a comforting thing. So how how am I going to get a a running start in 2017? I'm going to remember my position. I'm a a saved child of God. I'm going to remember the power uh, that God has given me. I'm going to remember the promises that God has. And the last thing is... So it was continuously the cloud would cover them by day and the fire by night. So when they, the children of Israel, got ready to leave, the cloud was always there in the daytime like a fog and the fire by by night like a pillar of fire to give them light. So they they, they saw by by their cloud and by the fire that God's presence was always there. So the last one is, Always be mindful of God's constant presence. He's always there. His constant presence. You can't escape from him. He's there. He's going to be by your side every moment of the day, even whether you believe it or not, even whether you know it or not. God's going to always be there. 
And sometimes we are distracted and we don't realize he's there. We don't realize that God is there because so many other things are going on. You got family, you got kids, you got health, you got finances, you got this and that, and you don't realize God is right there. Uh, some people did an experiment one time with a cell phone and a clown. Myself. And what they did, they had a clown to get on a pogo stick outside of a street, and the clown dressed up like a clown and just jumped up and down, just jumping up and down, and just jumping up and down and waving his hand. And then they watched people walk by. And they realized that the people who walked by texting and talking, and when they got down the street, they say, what do you think about the clown? They got, what clown? <laughs> but everybody who walked by just walking, doing nothing, they saw the clown. The, the idea is that if you're distracted, you're not going to know God is there. And we get distracted so easily. That's, what, that's Satan's job, is to distract us. It started with Eve. And so don't let distractions of, of stuff going on in your life. And stuff does go on. I wish stuff was stopped. That's a five-letter word I don't like. Stuff. But stuff will distract, distract you. And so God is always there. I like what it says in Genesis. I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go. I will not leave you. Uh, until I finish giving you everything I promise you. God is always there. There is a star in a 2,000, 2, uh, 12,000 light years away, if you guys know what, those of you who are into astronomy. And uh, the scientists have concluded this star is, is sending off a signal that's different from all the stars. This is has been in the news lately, and it's flickering, giving almost like a signal. And they've concluded that maybe it's not, it's, it's, a, it's an alien being that has a solar panel on another planet and signaling out light all over the world. Um, and so now they think that maybe they're paying attention, so maybe there's life in another 12,000 light years away. Light travels 186,000 miles per second, right? A light year is the, 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 the distance light travels per year, something like that. Anyway, you'll never get there. But the point is, <laughs> it takes 12,000 years for it to get here, the light. Uh, but God is not light. God is just not that far away. His presence is not so far away that you, that, 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 that you cannot reach him. God is right here, right now. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Be conscious of his presence, whether you're in your car, whether you're at Walmart, whether you are walking the street, whether you're at work, whether you just, wherever you are, just be conscious of his presence. And when you're conscious of his presence, you can say, uh, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so, Mr. you come on back. So, to get a running start, number one, remember you're what? You are a child of God, aren't you? No matter what happens, no matter what happens, you are a child of God. When the children of Israel... When, not, when, it, when, it, when the prodigal son came back home, and the first thing the dad did was put a ring on his finger. That was to show that he hadn't lost his status as a son. The ring, if, you, if, if your spouse comes back home, you're still my spouse. So the son had never lost his sonship. Number two, remember the what? How are you possessed? You are the light of the world. Muhammad Ali said, you can't see it so fast. You're the light of the world. Condensed light is like a laser. Powerful. Number three, remember God's what? He cannot lie. He cannot lie. And the last one, be mindful of God's constant presence. That he's always here.